Well, hey, everyone. Time for Gadget Talk, the monthly creative cast show brought to you by the Geocache Talk Geocaching Network. If you're watching live, you can be part of the adventure tonight. Please join us in the chat room. Participate with others as they watch the show. The link to the chat room is on the geocachetalk.com front page. It's the gray coffee cup. If you're listening later, please give it a like. Subscribe on your on YouTube, Facebook, even Twitch. And now here's your Gadget Talk host, Chad Champion, a.k.a. Bounce Bounce. Thanks, Gary. Uh, you want to mentor our sponsors? Absolutely. Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine right-in-the-rain paper. The logbook's designed for the micro containers of the present and future, geared toward the hider who would rather go geocaching than do cache maintenance. Find them at logwork, that's L O G W E R K dot com. Back to Chad. All right, great. Well, I want to welcome everybody back to uh, Gadget Talk, um, where we're actually going to do one of our builds uh, this Yay. tonight. So yeah, we have a pretty simple LED decryptor build uh, to do. And then I also want to thank Derek Baker uh, for the great video, opening video that he did for us. So really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We've got, we actually have a builder on the show tonight. The Mafia Princess. <laughs> Miley's going to build as we go, which I think is cool. But we also have, we have a uh, second camera. So that'll be cool to show here when we get started in a little bit. Uh, Chad has a camera that we're going to be showing the build from his perspective as well. So that'll be awesome. And if you have questions, we'll kind of get to them as we as we go um, during the show. Um, so that'll be great. Yep. Uh, if you have questions, just kind of put them in the chat room. Uh, we had a question earlier. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get to it, Stacy. Uh, we had kind of a bunch of stuff we had to do prior to the show, but uh, Stacy asked earlier about if there's a GC number for reference or example because solving the code has been confused already. That's okay, Stacy. We're gonna get to that. It won't be a problem, and we'll get you a couple GC codes you can see for reference a little later, or it'll be uh, in show notes. So. Perfect. Okay, so um, anything else, Gary? Or Anchor set. Okay. Start us off. Um, so the LED decryptor. So one of the reasons why I chose this one for the first build, it's a pretty easy basic build that you can actually expand on uh, and, and change it. If you want to start using Arduino or anything like that, um, you can use this build for that to start out. So uh, first thing is, I guess, is uh, we will start building with the, uh, the LEDs. Now I do wanna mention, if anybody has any questions, make sure they put it in the chat uh, so we can take a look at it as it's going and we can answer your question if you haven't. Yeah. So um, hopefully everybody purchased or has these LED, pre-wired LED uh, here. And the reason why I did pre-wired is because LEDs require a resistor to run. Otherwise, you'll blow the LED up. And so unless you have a lot of resistors and you know how to do the math and figure out what resistor you want and, and for the price, and if you would have to learn how to solder as well to put a resistor in, this for the price is the best way to go um, on that. And then it also is easy to tell. So an LED has both a negative and a positive. Uh, it has an, an anode and a, a cathode on it. And so the anode's the positive and the cathode's the negative. So when you're wiring these up, you want to make sure you have your negative to negative, obviously for the nine volt battery and your positive to positive, and you want to have all the wires together. Uh, one way to tell the difference on these pre-wired LEDs is to, if you look at the LED, you can go and switch the camera there. Um, you'll see the resistor. Let's see if we can get it to focus at some point. Maybe there we go. So that little bump there uh, on the other side there, that's the resistor. So that's gonna be your negative, okay, your, your cathode. So you wanna make sure that that is always connected with the other ones and that's your negative terminal. So just a real quick thing on LEDs. Um, 
So probably a lot of information you need to know. Oh, but that's good. It'll good. Make, things, good. It'll make things easier. And one reason why I say that is um, on the the ones that I buy here, typically your black wire would be your negative and your colored wire would be your positive. Um, I have other ones here that are actually wired differently. If I can pull them out. Too much do they always seem to have the, you can see the resistor through the. You can see the resistor. The casing. Yeah. Let me gotcha. Let's rip that out of there. Um, probably should have taken out the package before. Um, here you can see the resistor as well. And it's oh, yeah. on the colored one. Um, or on the negative one, which is the colored. I guess that's the same as the other one. Well, good to know though. Yeah. Wait a minute here. Huh. Maybe it's another. I have so many packs of LEDs. I was just looking through this, trying to bring up a good point. Yeah, so this one here is on the black um, wire, which is the negative, and it's a purple LED or a UV LED. So that would be backwards. So anyways, just look for that. Make things easy. Gotcha. Um, so uh, first thing we need to do is um, we need to strip these LED wires. So they'll come pre-stripped a little bit. Um, and they are typically soldered already as they are because it's a stranded wire, which makes it white. It's white. It's flexible. Um, but they will solder the tip of it. And typically you'd put that into a terminal block and tighten it down. But since we're going to use wire nuts on these, um, we're going to go ahead and strip about a half inch of them. So if you grab your wire cutters, um, and there's lots of different types. There's that one there. There's these kind here, whatever you have. Um, you just have to go down here and sometimes when you cut this so we want to we want to cut off about a half inch or we want to strip about a half inch um, you, you can strip it but sometimes what happens because it's soldered um you but if you put, your hand, put you your hand behind it usually it'll then focus yeah there you go and then yeah there you go there we go, there we go. Perfect. it ripped the wire apart mm -hmm. and that's because the solder there is not allowing the sheathing to go over it yeah. So uh, one of the things I do is line them up, and I will just cut the solder off of them. <clears throat> and now you shouldn't have a problem stripping it. But depending on how it is, you could try it either way. Then I'd strip a half inch of each, and then you want to twist the wire together on it. So you want to go to all eight wires. Mm -hmm. And make them all about the same length. Yeah, if you're, if you're careful, there's some different tools. Yeah, like you've got different tools to do it. But. <laughs> I'm cheating. Yeah, <laughs> you're using the you know, something. Uh, something we can do for Girl, those like everybody else. That's okay, but you know what, Chad? Something while you're doing that, I can mention is that what we'll do is. Um, as the as time goes on, we'll keep adding to the tool list in case you want to build. You want to keep building, you know, even if you're not watching live, if you're watching later, uh, you can always go to uh, go to geocache talk. There is a section for for gadget talk. And in the gadget talk, there will be an ongoing tools list. And then there also will be. Um, each month uh, parts list. So uh, if you're going to build, say, for example, this is the February build. Mm -hmm. If you build the February build, say, in July, you can go to, you can always go to geocachetalk.com, go to the Gadget Talk section at the top, and you can pull up February build, and you can always find the, the inform information there as well as, obviously, the video um, for that as well. So Perfect. That'd be great. Yep. Okay. So make sure there's no questions. You're watching the chat there. Yeah. I'm keeping on it. All right. Thanks. Um, so if everybody's done with that, which I might be a little bit faster than some people, um, since we know on these LEDs that the blacks are the positive or all the blacks go together, we're going to put all the black wires together. Check 
Everybody doing okay over there, Memphis? Yeah, he's I actually just muted him for a moment. Go ahead. How are you, how are y'all doing over there? Oh. We're doing well. Uh, she has stripped them all okay. and has all of them put together. All the blacks put together now. Yay. Okay, perfect. So if you put them all together, um, then you just put all the wires together and then twist all four wires together to make one big one. And then that will be your connection. So typically I would solder it at this point, but you really don't need to. I've actually put some of these out and have given some of these away uh, at events, these LED decryptors, and they've ran for years without any issues. Uh, I have one out that's been out for, I think almost four years. And this is doing it exactly this way, which there's a lot of other ways you can make these. You can do LED holders, you can do you know waterproof LEDs. Um, I'm trying to keep it simple and easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had a lot of success with these without any issues. So cool. So you want to put your colored wires or your, your negative, which is the colored ones on this one together. And then your positive, which is the black wires together, which is typically opposite of how they are usually. And then before we do anything else, we want to test them. So one thing I, I realized is I didn't put a nine volt battery in the parts list. Um, but that's what it's going to take to activate these. Uh, a six volt, nine volt, you might be able to go a little bit lower um, on it. So we're going to test it. And you have your, I don't have a nine volt battery. I don't typically carry my carry double A's. And so I have an adapter here, or a, a, a tool that takes the double A's and has a nine volt end on it. So it'll turn them into nine volts. So if you go to a cache, you can have double A's and a nine volt which is using the AA batteries. So we'll go ahead and touch these here to the port uh, that needs to go to. I'm gonna have to look. The small one is positive. The big one is negative. It's easier said than done. And then all the LEDs will light up so we know we're good on the connection. Always good to test before you put everything on. <laughs> Jessica said, good thing Derek sent me to Lowe's. Nice. <laughs> um, and then we're done, when we're done with that, we're going to take our terminal our connector here, and we're going to go ahead and add this. Okay, we're going to crimp this onto the end of the wire. Now, one thing I did notice when I was putting getting everything ready is I did put wire nuts on here. And the reason why I did that is on some of mine, I put a single wire from here to the to the screw because um, it's further away. And uh, for what we're, I'm putting it in one of these electrical conduit. Right. Um, so I don't need it to be that long. Now, if you need it to be longer, then you can add a piece of wire to it. Um, you could, oh, if you bought a case of these, you got a ton, you can cut one of each of these off and extend it. And then you need to use the wire nut for that. But since I'm putting in the small one, we're just going to go ahead and add this right here. So what you want to do is put it in here so you just barely see the wire. And then you're going to use your crimper. So the crimper on your tools here is is on the back side of this here to crimp it. And so that will pinch it there. Um, you could also use the tip, which some people do, but this is a better way to go. Um, and then on here, this one, this type of tool, it's in the very front, but it depends what you have. Um, this one here, they all crimp different. It's right here in the middle. Um, but every tool should have it. So what we're gonna do, I'll use this one here. We're just gonna go ahead and crimp this tight. And that's it, that should be your connection. And we'll do it to the other side. <laughs> Tom, don't force it. Get a bigger hammer. Yeah. <laughs> if you're watching me squeeze it, uh, I over tighten everything. So I probably don't need to crimp it as hard, but <laughs> that's the way it is. It doesn't come undone. I've never had any issues. So there you go. Um, so once this is back on, we're going to go ahead and test it again. Your positive, your negative. I always like to test things multiple times to make sure that yep. we're good to go. 
Absolutely. And so that is pretty much your LED decryptor build, except for now, if you have a container to put it in, um, we can add it to the container. Um, I have, uh, like I said, I'm going to use here one of these access for, for conduit. Um, yeah. Show, uh, kind of hold that up and show everybody what you're using to kind of give a whole, yeah, give the so whole this, story. Yeah, this is what I'm using. It's a conduit access uh, port. And so the reason why I use this is because when I put these out, let me grab something right here. Um, I like to use these little boxes, uh, these these uh, electrical boxes here. Yeah. They're like $8 at Home Depot. Uh, you can put a lock on it, which is what you'll need, a, a combination lock. Uh, and oh, then you right. can put stuff in it. And then you can get an adapter. This actually has been already is already at three quarters. So I had to put an adapter on here to fit half inch. Okay. Um, this would just go right on there or here. Let's, why don't we use the one that already has kind of the LEDs in it? Although I didn't screw it together, but it'd go on like that. And then I would put a cap on the bottom. So it's sealed, keeps the moisture. Okay. Out, gotcha. Right. And then that's it. I don't have these LEDs mounted in there either, but um, I would glue those in. We'll go over that. So that's why I have that. Um, I like to use. Now, I have in the past for uh, several of them used the bigger one, if you want. And this works oh, okay. the exact same way. So you can use any container you want. Um, this works the same way. It has some tips on it here, and it will light up. And this one okay. has like a pink and an orange light, which is, I don't think, came in the typical packs. Okay. Um, so, anyways, there's lots of different ways you can do it um on there and we at the very end here i'll go over a few other things and i yeah. use the smaller ones you can use any size you want on those well, the nice thing with that one is that you've got your container you kind of build it all all in one because you got your actual container container where you're going to put the cash yes the log book and all that so that's cool and then on that um i just if you can't mount it to something um, I use at Home Depot. You can buy these these uh, big magnets like this. They have a hole in it with a screw, and you can put that one or two on the back of that and magnetic it to a sign or you know another panel box or whatever you find that's magnetic. Um, it's up to you. You can do all kinds of stuff. Okay, that's cool. why I like using that. It's easy. So, um, okay, so Let's, back. Uh, Take a minute. Let's check in with uh, with Jesse. See how he's doing. You're on mute though, Jesse. So you're gonna have to unmute yourself there for a minute, or I can unmute you. Okay. Here, if you put us up on the screen, we'll we'll do our little test here. Cool. Oh. <laughs> got it working. I like it. She's got it working so far, but um, I have learned something new for me too. I need to mute it while we're building stuff because. <laughs> Oh, you're I, fine. I build like my father taught me to build, which is not always uh, appropriate for TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. You're good. All right, good deal. All right, we're. I guess we're gonna continue on then. Yeah. So, um, I'll take this one here apart. So, whatever you're gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and use this conduit access part. Right. Um, now we need to drill uh, four holes for the LEDs. Now, if you have a, a lock that has three combinations on it, then right. just do three LEDs. You don't have to do four, you know. Um, sure. You could do a whole bunch and have, you know, blue minus green, you know, if you have the numbers in there, and then they got to do all the math. And I would never find that one. I'm not that smart. <laughs> um, but there's all kinds of things you can do to these um, to actually make them, to make them fun and unique. So I take some tape. Nope. We lost. Uh, hang on a second. We lost you on the other one. Uh, He'll jump back in. It's just to build suspense, I believe. <laughs> yeah. He disconnected by mistake. He bumped it probably. So he'll be back in a minute. So uh, it's okay. We'll uh, we're, we're following along so far. If we can follow whoop. anything like this, I think everybody else is too. So. Yeah, you're doing good. You're doing good. Um, so, um, now, did you 
You crimped them. Yeah, I, so we crimped them, but I actually picked up the wrong part because I wasn't paying attention. Oh, and, yeah, that's right. Now, which, you know what, is a good lesson. I picked up the wrong part. We're going to figure a way to, to play around it. And I can always take it off later and, and redo it. So uh, yeah, that's fine. And we've got we've got a small plastic container. It's a little bit smaller than the one I think he's going to use tonight. But uh, it's about the right size, though. All right, yeah, it'll work. It looks awful thick, though. We're going to see how this drilling works. Sorry about that. I no problem. need to keep my mouse away from my thing. I just exited the <laughs> exited out of the. Hey, podcast. it wouldn't be fun if something didn't go wrong, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We just, we just learn something all the time. We just got a little update, so that's fine. Great. All well, right. I get, let people get caught up, hopefully. Yep. So I tape it just to make sure, um, you know, I can write on it and then it doesn't mess up the, the coloring of the of the conduit. Uh, and then I take a tape measure or, or measuring tape ruler, which, you know, I don't think I brought one up here with me. Um, well, that doesn't have it on there. Anyways, measure out. You know, your four equal, however you want to do it. I would just do four in the middle, something like that. Works for me. And then drill. Now, one thing that Jesse brought up to me that I completely messed up on is I think I called out a five sixteenths inch drill bit, and it's actually three sixteenths. So your your drill bit may be a little bit too big. <laughs> it's all uh, right it's for the okay. LEDs. So, um, but you want to drill out four equal holes in this. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just save some time. Damn. Here we well, go. Everybody will, be doing, everybody will be doing it too. So <laughs> Yeah, okay. We'll give them a minute to do that. So, yeah. So, what size did you think people should, should do when, when they actually... It's 316. So, if we take okay. one of the LEDs, I have this little measuring thing here for holes. Oh, and another put it in here. And so... <laughs> Um, it will say on here and it says three sixteenths. Okay. Yeah. That you makes go, sense. So, um, if yeah, you go five, five, it'll be five sixteenths is here. So, oh yeah. That's big. Too big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three so, sixteenths. Yes. We'll, we'll fix the, we'll fix the chart, uh, or we'll fix the parts, but it's no problem. That's not a problem. So you know what I'm doing? I'm going to go ahead and drill this just to drill. Yeah. It. Cause probably everybody else is drilling it too. We got, we got a minute. To do so, and my yeah. holes are not going to be. Yeah, they have to be perfect. Let me grab a piece of acrylic here. Sorry, I just don't want to drill into my desk. Oh yeah, don't blame you. Now I. I use a uh, drill press a lot, but for these little holes, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Now I just go let the drill and the pressure do its job. Otherwise, when you're going through plastic, the um, the drill bit could move on there and it'll leave an ugly hole. So sure. Just let, let the weight and the drill and the drill bit do its job. Right. Oh. Uh, regular drill bit, right? Ryan was asking. Regular drill bit, yes. It's plastic, so you can use any kind of drill bit, typically. But yeah, just regular drill bit, standard. Don't forget safety glasses, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Not covered by L and I, I don't think so. I think we're okay. Yep. There, there you go. Got them all in there. So there we go. We got the holes. Yep. And that part is done. So now that we have this in here, um, we need to decide what we're going to do um, on this. Now, you can, what I do, like this one we're going to build. We're going to put two screws here, two of the, the number eight pan heads on here to be able to actually touch the battery to. Right. Um, and so don't put it in the back. I wouldn't recommend it, but I don't have really tiny fingers to actually get down there to tighten up the nut. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you can put it here. 
Now, what I've seen some people do, and I, I know West Virginia Tim has a great video on there where you put a whole bunch, but they're too far apart to touch with a nine volt, except for one, and it's like an angle. Right. So you could do that. I have one back here that actually has screws all over it. Um, so it takes a little bit more time for people to do it, but right. it, those are really fun to find. So more, you do whatever. More. We're just going to keep it like this, and you can decide what you want to do right. um, on this build. So um, what we're going to do now, the easiest way of doing this is would be to measure it. But if you just take your your 9-volt battery, mm -hmm. you see the terminals, you just can make a couple marks. Center them, right? And center them. Yep. Right. And then you know that's right where you want to drill right and if they're off a little bit it you know these the terminals are big so they don't have yeah. to be perfect so but what not on the edge because you know as you drill you're gonna give it a little space yeah yeah give it a little bit of space um so we'll go ahead and drill those out and this is why i went with the number eight pan heads is because in in theory, you're supposed to use the same drill bit for the LEDs in this. Right. But uh, here we go. And then that should be it with the drill. If I remember right, yeah, it should be it. Yep. So now Before. we're going to take our LEDs. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Um, we're going to take our LEDs, and uh, the terminals we put on here are going to require the screw. Now on there, I, I I believe I said like three quarter inch or half inch number eights. Um, if you one good thing about one of your uh, about your tools here your wire cutters is if you don't have that size, if you look on the one side of them, it says number 832 is a number six, 830 seconds and 630 seconds. If you screw this in there, because it's gonna to be too long, oh, I'm, not, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use this to go yeah. in there, um, just because it's quicker than doing it with my fingers. Um, this is actually made to cut screws. So it threads yep. in there. Just make sure you thread the head part in to the right side. Otherwise, when you cut it, you're going to have to try and unscrew the, the other side. So you cut it and then unscrew it. Right. And then you have the size you need. Just something, I don't know if people know that on these tools. Um, they all should have that. This one here actually has a lot other a lot of other sizes. Right. Um, versus the one that, that I have there. So anyway. Handy. Yeah. You can't eyeball it. I've done that before. <laughs> you, you can't. Um, the nice thing about this is, when you're backing out of the thread, when you yeah. cut a when you cut a screw, right, it will mess up the edges. And yeah, the I know. So <laughs> when you does. back it out, it actually fixes it. So yeah, that is, doing with the tool. If you if you do it brute force like I've done before, you do you mess up the end of it. But yeah, yeah, I think we've all done it that way. <laughs> if we had to, in a pinch. Yeah. Um, and so then what we're going to go ahead and do is take your screws. Take one of them, put it here. It doesn't. It shouldn't matter if it's negative or positive unless you have a certain direction you want these in. Right. Um, we're just going to go ahead and take this and then put the nut on it. Now, some people, and, and it, it's up to you, you can either, if it's too hard to, to keep the wire on here. Yeah. You can put it, and you have two more nuts. You can do it with a nut and then put another Oh yeah. nut yeah. on it. Right? Yeah. But... I'm not, well, I say I'm not worried you. about it, but my fingers are too fat. So I'm going to cheat. But, you know, that's something, though, you mentioned, Chad, is important is that you want to make sure wherever you do put it, people can get, <laughs> people can get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to make sure they can get to it. Because you don't want to, like you said, if you put it on the back, if it's too close to the to a wall, you're going to be, you know, people can't use it. So, 
Yeah, and and this connector is just a spare one I had. I probably wouldn't use an angled one here because you can't get it close to a wall. But again, you'll you'll see yeah. the the double straight one here. Yeah, it was this. So. Perfect. Yep. Uh, so we'll get both these on real quick. Yep. How's it going over there, Jesse? Oh, we're doing okay. We um, I picked up a oh. short bolt. I keep pushing well, I'm having to adapt a little bit, but that's okay. okay. You're We're using working. something similar too, aren't you, Jesse? You're putting in the, you got it in a little container, a little. Uh, yeah, right. it's uh, so we got the container. We have the holes drilled. Cool. On the top. Um, we don't have the right connectors, so we're trying to work a new system here, which, why not? Why wouldn't we figure something brand new out live while we're Perfect. Learning? Yeah, so if you have the bigger bolts of, uh, than the, the connectors, or, oh, you have totally different. I was going to say, if you had bigger ones in that round connector, you can cut it and make it a U and then slide it in there, which you can do on any of these. But I went with these because I don't want it to slide off for any reason. So... I like these ones. And this is why I like to screw these close to the front because my fingers are too fat to make this stuff work. While you're working on that one, uh, Chad, there's a question about um, how would you modify this for an ammo can? I will show you actually here at the end. Um, I actually made one here as a sample um, that we're going to give away at Mingo. Um, and it's in a plastic ammo can. So I chose a plastic one because it's non-ferrous metal because aluminum does conduct electricity. Um, but I have put them in a metal containers and used a rubber grommet to, oh, to right. separate it from the, use a bigger, probably a five, six inch drill bit with a rubber grommet and it kept it away from the metal. So, um, cool. but yeah, I will show you that. And I have a few other ammo cans at the end here to show you that you can use uh, some examples of what you can do with these and, and how you can actually modify them a little bit with an Arduino um, and different ideas. Right. I like it. Again, I'm having a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> TBS Ryder mentioned you could have use some needle nose pliers to yeah. in there as well. Probably smarter than me. <laughs> Look at that. I did that and I forgot to put the wire in there. <laughs> so you know what we're going to do? We're going to on now. Okay. Oh, never mind. Okay. We're going to adjust this. And then it'll offset the connectors anyways, right? Yeah. <laughs> the height of them. People are, you know, they're putting them together as well. So you're doing great. Burn Turtles is funny. He says, uh, I like when Chad answers the questions before I can type them. That's, <laughs> pretty, that's pretty good. Well, good. Then hopefully those are questions that I've come up in my head with. Right. I'm building things and learn. Exactly. Makes sense though. Uh, I've done that before. We, we use needle nose pliers to hold the the nut in place and then do it. Yeah. But you got it going. Oh, I got it. Here we go. Sweet. <laughs> My patience is with that. It takes I guess more hand eye coordination than I have. So <clears throat> so here we go. We got it in the screws in there. We have the LEDs. Again, I like to test things because there's nothing like getting it all together and then not having it work. Right. Um, so everything here is working on it. And the nice thing about doing it this way too is if you do have an LED that does go bad, um, you can just change the one LED out um, easy mm -hmm. enough. So, and if you did use the wire nut and you put them all in a wire with a single, then that's even easier. But again, that's, that's up to you. Okay. Um, you can also put a battery pack in here, a nine volt battery, which I've done, and then just had a wire that people connect, but we can, we'll show that at the end, kind of a different option that you can do okay. on that. So we will take these and, you know, I did not grab my hot glue gun, but I would put these in here like this, and then you can tape them. But what I recommend doing is hot gluing them. I bent these over. I don't know why I bent them over. Right. Because tape will get nasty, as, especially as outdoors. 
Yes, or, and more than likely. So, and uh, the hot glue actually kind of helps seal the water from water from coming in. Um, if you have time, you could do silicone, which is even better. Oh yeah, but, but I've used hot glue for years, and I've never had an issue. So hot glue these in. I think that's why I had this piece of tape here from before when I was demoing it. Sure. But um, hot glue them in. And so I don't think I called that out on a tool thing. Yeah. Because I wasn't sure what container you'd put it in. But hot glue it in, let, let it dry. And uh, then you just have to shove everything back in here. Put the two screws on. Yep. Gorilla glue would work. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I have some behind oh, me, actually. Actually, the epoxy would work really well in a fast setting. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I wouldn't want to have to take it. If vanilla D goes bad, I wouldn't want to have to take it out. Hot glue, you can heat back up. Uh, Ryan's asking about, you're, you're gluing from the inside, right? You don't want to show that on the outside. Correct. Right? Yeah, you want to do it from the inside. Um, now, I will say from an experience that I had, is you know and you always learn this you put this out and you're like oh yeah this will be great people think about things different ways and i've had people actually push the leds in oh no and yeah. so uh make sure you're good with the glue the epoxy like you said the grill glue would be great um so uh sure yeah good. on one of them i actually cut a piece of acrylic that goes over this the same size and put it on top so that people can actually push it in Right. Um, but it's a harder one that requires a tool to get to it. So I'm thinking they thought if they pushed in on them, they would light up. I'm not sure. Right. So anyway, uh, that is it. Again, we'll double check it. Make sure it lights up. Lights up there. So you, now, got, uh, you got red, yellow, blue, and green. Obviously, you want to make sure your colors are pretty clear. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's hard on these screens. Now, um, when it comes to the encrypting of them, and typically, I divide the blue and the green away from each other. Oh, right. That makes um, sense. But uh, um, you don't have to use... So this is a four-pin combination, and those would be all different numbers. Now, you could go two blue and two red, which would be one, one, two, two, right? And if red was one and blue was two or whatever, yeah. you know. Um, but again, that's up to you, however you want to do it. Um, you can do the individual colors. Um, it's completely your call. A couple of them too are mentioning Chad, Burn Turtles, and uh, Jeff are mentioning that you could you could flush, make them flush so that they're people can't really mess. I mean, they they push on it, but it's not going to do anything. I mean, you know what I mean? Right. You can keep them down a little bit. Yeah, and you can get these connectors if you want. So these LED holders that actually screw on, and the LED doesn't protrude from it. But then it's a lot, it's a bigger expense and you put a bigger hole in it. And what I find is it doesn't keep it as watertight as I like it. Oh, yeah. Um, so they got the metal ones and then they have them in a the plastic as well. Um, so there's an LED holder. Um, another good way to go if you're worried about it, and I actually bought these for that cash that <laughs> keeps happening to. Um, these, I brought one out already. These are one that I just found. They're watertight uh, LEDs. So you can see it has a, oh, let's see if we can get it to, there we go. I got it. it yeah, there it goes. There you go. See, it has that rubber washer on there. Um, and uh, you can take it and screw it in nice and tight. It doesn't protrude from it. Um, so it would actually be watertight. You wouldn't have to hot glue it on there. And so it would last. This actually would work really well out there. Um, but I just found these. Otherwise, I probably bought them before. They're a little bit more expensive, but and they don't come in a giant pack. We could um, we could add those to uh, as an optional part. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I mean, I would recommend them if they're going to be out in the weather. So if you're going to put in an an, on an ammo can facing up, um, this would probably be the better way to go um, than the hot glue. But the one I did, I, I found these after I made the sample. Yeah. Um, the way I did it, I'll show you how I did it, and it and it should be good. Yeah. Well, we'll add that as the optional too. So perfect. Uh, let's see. Is there any other questions as we're going along here? Should we check back with Memphis real quick? Yeah. So let's check back. See how it's going. So um, we are working on it. Um, we're having to adapt a little bit. So that's it's kind of fun, but. Um, 
we just because we have the wrong kind of connectors, but we tested it. It does work. Cool. So we can put it out. Yay. Um, so we're trying to adapt it here to get a really solid connection because I don't have the right kind of connector on it. Yeah. But, um, but that's half the fun, right? Figuring out how to make it work. Absolutely. Yeah. It's part of the engineering. So, um, yeah, and if anybody's building these and they want to share, uh, if you share them on, on uh, Instagram, uh, make sure you tag us, the, the uh, Gadget Talk podcast uh, on Instagram. So I'd love to see your builds that you come up with. We'd love to also see it if people actually put them all the way out, right? Like GC codes and everything. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, do you want to have them send them? Oh, put them out there and put hashtag Gadget Talk podcast. Uh, hashtag and then at. I don't remember which one actually tagged. At or yeah. I think it's at. It would be the same the, as the, saying at you. So you you'd use Gadget Talk podcast, not the. Not, this is the whole email address, but you would leave off the. Here, I'll do it real quick. Just well, and if they if they want to email pictures, if they don't have Instagram, if they want to email pictures to that to the email there, Gadget Talk podcast at gmail .com, I'll go ahead and post them on there and put your name on there on whose it is. Yeah. Um, so everybody can see what you're doing. Yeah, I think you can do. Do it with a hash hashtag. I or usually hashtag it and do at because I think at is when it's taking you in it. Gotcha. I th I think and I'm not a guru on that stuff, but so and if if nothing else works, you can always just email the pictures, right? And we can get them posted up there for you. Yeah, yeah. Email them. I'll post them up. Um, give me your geocaching name. Uh, if you want your name on it, and we'll just show it out to everybody what you're doing. Well, and all, we'll, all the creations. We'll put any or all of them on the the page on the website too. So, not just social media, but we'll put them on the actual Geocache Talk website on the the Gadget Talk page. That's fun. I, I'm excited to see what people come up with, and and you know, I didn't list a container on the parts list because you know everybody has a different idea for a container, and so I'm really curious to see how they what kind of container they use uh, on these. So. So we're being told it, it is an at for Instagram. So let me change okay, it. Um, so one thing, if you would, Chad, before we go on showing some of the other uh, optional things as well, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play dumb guy because I'm being a dumb guy here. So because um, I'm trying to wrap around my head around, would you put – numbers on there or would you so on the or on the cash page would you i mean i'm trying to what do you think the best way so on the cash page so one of the reasons why i use clear leds so yeah. this will kind of explain it is because if i use the colored ones because you can't get them in colored then people would know what the colors are and wouldn't need to light them up right um which if you're gonna do something like that you might as well just put uh <laughs> right. some dots on there that are you know vinyl or something uh, which I actually do have a cache like that. Um, so now if you look at this set here, yeah, this has pink, orange, red, yellow, white, warm, white, UV, light green, dark green. Um, so sure, this sure. has a lot of colors. So you have, uh, what, 10 colors here to choose from. Right. So what I do is I do, I don't do 10. I usually do nine. And so I'll write it out. In fact, here, let's do it. So number one equals, let's say pink, right? Or pink equals number one, I guess. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and then you just go down blue uh, equals number two, um, green equals three. So I have that out there. And so they don't know what colors they are because they're, they're the clear LED. Uh, once they light them up, then they'll know, okay, well, green is one, you know, and there's a blue one. Okay, blue is is two. Pink or pink is one. Blue is two. Uh, so they'll know what the combination is. And then what you can do is you can say then you need to decrypt it in numeric order, low to high or high to low. Um, it's up to you, organs. You know, however you want to do it. Um, but okay. that's what I do is I put one through nine on there because they don't know what colors you have um, out there. And so, anyways, that's the way I do it. It makes it simple. So that's actually on the cache page. Right in there so they don't need to look it up and if you're good with creating a cache i what i did was i actually made the pink pink right so and the number one pink 
Yeah. Um, so I actually changed the colors except for white <laughs> because you can't make white on there. So those are black. Right. Um, but anyway, that there's all kinds of ways. And again, if, if you want to send a picture of how you do it to me, just to see, I'd love to see how people do it. You know, the nice thing about this is just being creative and, and uh, coming up with your own ideas. And I'd love to see it because everybody has different ways of doing it. I think uh, people are asking about, there isn't an ultraviolet. I think people are like, there's not ultraviolet a is pink is it's, or uh, purple. It's purple. Okay. Yeah. So this is UV. It's not it's, really UV though. Well, it kind of. Well, yeah, it is absolutely. But you can. Um, but you can't. It's not ultraviolet. You you wouldn't be able to see it. What they're saying. No, you would still see it. So here, look. It lights up purple, right? I have a UV light here. You turn it on. Oh, that's it's true. Purple, right. Yeah, that's true. It's it's the exact same thing. Yeah, you're right. It's still it's, it's still UV. You're right. So it, but it would show up purple. Yeah. In your on your thing for your description. Um, lights up purple. Yep, you're right. Correct. Cool. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. I like the idea too, because, like you said, you you don't want them. You want to, you want them to to not figure it out without. Correct. The only one where I do have the colors, the where you can see them, is ones that actually flash different times, and so then yeah. you actually, even if you know what the colors are, you you got to count them to decide. Another thing you can do, um, you know, is you could have, you know, pink minus blue. And, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff like that to where then now they got to start doing math. I think I mentioned that earlier. Um, you know, again, there's there's so many ways and so many ways, you know, puzzles yeah. you can make with these. Well, and that's the good thing is each month we'll kind of do something a little bit different. But um, Jeff Cashline was mentioning you could include a hidden UV message on a flap. Use the United Volt to light the UV light. See so, the yes, yes, that's a great idea. In fact, I, I I made one at one point using one of these. This is a bigger one than than the one here we made, but I used the bigger one than this, the one size bigger. Um, and I actually did a did a hole here, or was it on the side? I don't remember. Anyways, and so it lit up. But in order to get the code, you actually had to look through the hole and the UV oh, yeah. lit up a number in there. So unless you had it lit up, you wouldn't see the number because it's UV pen. Oh, yeah. Um, like but yeah, I mean, and again, that's a great idea. And, and uh, make it. Let's, you know, we can. I'd love to see it and see what you do. But all kinds of things you can do. You can do a peephole for a door on here. I think they only need three inches before you uh, so you can see it. So oh, yeah. you need something deeper than this. But um, if you did a people to look in and they had to light it up, um, they could do that. You could do one that has multiple screws. And if you did that, then you would just hook these two. Um, well, it's, it's a little more complicated, but you could uh, have wires to jump. The negative would be hooked to a battery and, the, and these would be hooked to each other. Uh, we'll have to go over it for an expansion. But anyways, you can have them have to hook stuff up. And then have a light come on, uh, anything like that. I mean, there's yeah. there's all kinds of stuff. So Jesse, do you have something? Yeah. So I would say um, just just to remind everybody that this is just part of a container, right? So you can use this to get a code, whatever kind of puzzle it is. It doesn't mean it has to be the only. Oops, where am I? I'm not even on. Nah. Uh, it doesn't mean it has to be the only uh, kind of puzzle out there. Nor does it have to be a traditional or a mystery. It could be. Obviously, where I go, but I mean, it could be uh, it could be any type of puzzle. So this is just a, a basic starting block of a way to get a code, right? I mean, you could do it. You could do several different things with this, or even put out more than one stage of the same type of thing. So before we even get into something crazy, this could be something that gets you to another stage, and you can sure. work one of these out there. And they got to take that nine volt around to two or three different stages and get different color codes that mean different things at different places. Um, you can really expand on, you know, kind of what, what we've started here tonight. And uh, I'm really excited to see what people do. Cause you know, anytime you give a cash or something, they run with it from there. Right. They, they come up with all kinds of different ideas, but I would say uh, do it, play with it, put it out. I, I would definitely hope people are going to put these out and use them. Um, it's a good skill to have, but it's even better to actually see it out in the field. Right. Oh, absolutely. oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah, tremendous. A lot of people are making notes uh, in the chat room about um, 
you know, the um, uh, Tom was saying a thing about build a box of connections for normal lights that would light up silly stuff, but also a UV that would light up the coordinates. So that's kind of a neat idea to kind of tw tweak a little bit. So yeah, I will say that even with the wrong parts, we were still able to build ours tonight. Hey! She did almost all of it. Let's see it light up things. Mafia Prince. Well, we'll, but then we'll know what your code is, I guess, right? Right. That's right. You would. <laughs> I don't have the LEDs glued in there right now. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In there, but, um, and I, I want to do a little seal around it too. I think the yeah. a little water seal in this thing. This thing is probably pretty tight, but it probably can't hurt to do a little like caulking or a little like a little seal in there too, right? They usually come with like this one here is, is a seal that's actually glued on there. Yep, this uh, one has that too. So is that sufficient? Okay. And yeah, that typically is, but it doesn't hurt to do more. Okay. Right. Just got to remember if you got to do maintenance on it, you got to take it apart. So don't make it. What's maintenance? <laughs> yeah. You just so leave them out there. Breaks breaks you have to do once in a while. Yeah. Just if it breaks, you just archive it and leave it. So um, do you want to show the last, like, kind of show, if you would, Chad, kind of, you don't have to put all completely together, but can you kind of put all the pieces together in a sense so people can get an idea of. Yeah. Uh, so what, like this. That is that, but then where's the container and all the other? Oh, okay, stuff? right. And so just so people can kind of see the whole. So, like <laughs> I said, I like to use these these little containers here that you can get at Home Depot. Right. I think they're eight dollars or something. They used to be even cheaper, but um, so again, you put a lock on here, um, and then you just use your nine volt battery. Yeah. And and uh, light it up. Yeah. And so they'd go there. They'd go on. They would light it up. Go on the cash page. Uh, and look at the the numbers on there to decrypt it, and then the, the lock, and then once you open it, then you can log. Right, and you, the, of course, the like you said, uh, seal it all up real good. Cap on the bottom, and this in your case, um, I, I guess you would want to. Would you would you go ahead and like permanently connect it to that? Oh. Yes. So I have it threaded right here. Just okay. because that's the connection I had. So this was this set. I have a UV light in a tunnel that you have to look for the cords in the tunnel for the next stage. Okay. And so this sat in the tunnel um, with UV lights in it. So um, that's the only reason why those are on there is uh, these would sit in there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, okay. So they kind of had a little holding spot, but some kids found it and destroyed it. So I brought it home. Yeah. Um, that was another question. Uh, also, somebody was mentioning about putting Teflon on the threads. That's always good to kind of seal the thread, seal the. Yeah, you can, you can do anything you want. Uh, again, um, with on tape or whatever on there to. Yeah. With, with this, with the conduit, you can actually glue it on there and it's permanent. Sure. Um, which is what you would typically end up doing. Um, but again, it's completely up to you because once you glue it, the way you attach it here is you just have a wire connection. You unscrew it, the whole thing. And then. Yeah. The whole thing would come down as one. But again, it, it's completely up to you. Um, you know, you can go to your Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, put parts together. Um, if you look on Instagram, you'll see some of my drawers that I have of all kinds of fittings that I sit there and go through. And right, you'll, you know, there's all kinds of options. So there's that one. And, um, you know, another interesting way, and I actually was going to build this um, and didn't, I ran out of time, is if you wanted to now, I'm not a big fan of of these just because homeless looking them for power, right? So this is just a power box that's covered. Yeah. Um, if you took one of these, you would just have to cut, trim it down a little bit, mm -hmm. mount it in there, and then you could do it in here, and it would be it'd be closed, right? So no one would see it. Oh, right, right, right. And then you'd open it up and be like, oh yeah, there it is. Um, yeah. Maybe, so you can even put the description if you wanted of the colors on there for the code, but again, that's up to you. Probably a good one for that one. You can even leave it blank because you can put it on the cash page. But if somebody, I'm just trying to think of when people walk by and they open it up, if they see it just has lights and there's no, no way to get into it, they hopefully I'll just move on. Yeah. I have one still with these on there out there. And actually what it actually looks like is this. So there's nothing in it. Oh, okay, I, have, yeah. I have RFID card Velcroed here that people never see. And that's what they actually did taught that they used to get to the cash. Oh, so, but anyways, that, I just don't like because we have a, a lot of homeless issues and they yeah. are always trying to charge their cell phones. Well, we, we have a lot of kid 
but kids that like to tend to find stuff in our area and destroy them. So it's kind of nice to have them built in such a way that. Yeah. So, and then I, I think I showed this one already. You can, like I said, you use all kinds of containers. Um, this is a real easy one. Same thing. It would just mount up in here. You have the four lights. You can do more lights. Um, uh, up to, you know, that's, that's completely your call. Um, let's see ammo can question earlier. So, um, the one that I did is, is one of these plastic Harbor free ammo cans. So, you know, five, five or six dollars with tax ammo can, yeah, um, show all that real quick. Just kind of turn so, it on. Just turn so, it on the side real quick, Chad. Real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So ammo can, it has a place for a lock on yeah. it. Um, so yeah, just a, a really basic cheap ammo can. The reason why I did it, it's, it's, um, non-ferrous so it it will no electricity is plastic so when yeah. you try and hook up your battery it doesn't mess anything up um it'll work so um just attach the wires to it it'll light them up and then that will give them the code for this uh so you don't actually need a nine volt battery uh for the lights uh it would take a lot of lights for a nine volt for not to light up a nine volt your nine volt would be uh pretty cheap or would be pretty dead. This is actually here, six volts. So 1.5 times four is six. Right. Um, and it lights them up easy. Um, so there's not really a limit. I think I have six volts. I'll show, <laughs> I'll show one here on six volts and it's lighting up a ton of LEDs and an oh. Arduino. Oh, cool. So it's powering a lot of stuff. Um, so this is this one. Oh, let me show the inside what I did. Um, so this would be a good one to use as wire waterproof ones on, but I took this and you could fill it with silicone, uh, and let it harden and everything is enclosed. You could paint it when you're done. Um, it's up to you or just leave it the way it is. And now it's watertight and nothing, no one's going to get to it, take it apart. It's completely in there. Um, this is, I actually want to use silicone. This is actually just a bunch of hot glue. Um, oh, okay. yeah. I didn't want to go up my van to get silicone. Um, but anyways, that's, that's that way. Uh, and not, it's never going to come apart. So, you know, or, or fall apart or someone take it apart without actually really trying. Yeah. I like that. Um, so there's that. And I just got to put a sticker on it for geocaching. Um, now what we were talking about a few other ones, if you can actually show here behind me, Gary, oh, yeah. um, do that. There's a few other ways, a couple other demonstrations of ways you can do it. So one I did on Instagram here, um, I posted, it requires uh, a light. So I'm going to use a laser, but a regular flashlight or even a UV light here would work if you shine it. So this is the same thing, but instead of having a battery connection, it has a photo cell in it. Um, you shine it up here and then it lights up the LEDs um, and then they can decrypt it that way. I actually made this for a parking garage with a laser in a, in a uh, you're going to find a container with a lot of tots in it. And one of them was going to be a uh, mirror. And so a laser would be shooting across. You have to use the mirror to uh, shine it up in there, but a laser will light it up really easy as cool. well. So um, we'll, do a, we'll do a photo sale some, some month. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a really easy thing. Um, this, I think the battery in this has been in there for over a year. Um, so they last a long time because the only power it's using is when it's lit up. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then this one here is, uh, has a battery in it. And so this has a bunch of different screws around it, which I don't know if you can see. There's a few on that. There's a few on this side. Um, there's two here that would fit a nine volt. Um, but what I did is I put a battery inside and I have this tool here um, that actually tucks into the, there's a hole into the pipe into that it actually tucks into. So it's not sticking out and people aren't like, oh, what's that wire? Right. Um, you can pull that out and then you got to find which one. You got to attach it to which one. And the way I had this one is up here. But when it was out, it actually was on this side. So you actually had to look, and it was sitting fairly low. So you actually kind of had to get down to look for the screw. Right. So I, I would get a lot of people sending me messages. It's not working. 
I'm just like, you're just not finding the right screw. So anyway, same type of thing, um, but a container with, so you can put a lock on it. And then another one that's kind of fun that you can do um, out there would be a, a camera. So this is just a, actually a, it's a seven or $8 dummy camera. Security, um, camera. Yeah, security camera. And um, you just, this one here I have set up to a button. So it has internal battery. Um, and you just got to find the button and it's up inside here and you push the button and it lights up the LEDs and that one You could put the camera way up high if you want um, You could do a camera in the middle with with a, some conduit going out and down and you'd take two people right to complete the circuit and it'd be a, a, a team cache um, Or a teamwork cache. Yeah, I love you that could, idea. Or you can make it three if you took the camera and you pointed it down in the middle and you had the, the buttons 10 feet away or 20 feet away, probably 10 from each side. So they couldn't see it. You'd have to have someone in the middle that actually saw the colors. Um, well, I like it that. It'd be a three person one, or you could put your, your <laughs> camera there on record too. And, and only do it with two people, but that's up to you. Um, but that's fun. I love teamwork caches. So, um, and I have one of these that uses Arduino um, that flashes different colors. And I, I believe that, there's one being made to bring to Mingo to show people. So that would be a really good place to, to take a look at it and see. Yeah. Um, and then once you want to actually go into um, using our Arduino, if you want to step up this here, back to the oh, real, yeah. um, this is in a regular ammo can. Um, and this I have that you have to bring your batteries to, you put your batteries in and then what you have to do is count the flashes. So right. and then it will time out for a few seconds in between, and then it will start over. And you got to count how many times it flashes for each color, and then that's the code. But in the page, it will say from you know, the code is in order of green, red, blue. And this is only a three LED because it uh, the lock only has three, sure, three combinations. Hey, you open it up, and then that's the cache in there. Yeah, you know how they say that's for another show. That's for another build. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it's the same thing we did just hooked up to an Arduino. So, oh, yeah. and, it, and that's a really <laughs> easy code to do, but we'll, yeah, over it sometime. we'll do that someday when we, we gotta, we gotta walk before we run, right? <laughs> no, you just jump in, jump right yeah. in. Yeah. As long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. A um, couple of questions uh, okay. that have come up. One is, and I think Eric, I don't know if it, Eric's saying that he's got a, you can only see them as colored, not clear. I, maybe it's the kind of, Maybe it's the LED, the LEDs he has are colored and not. Yeah, if you bought colored LEDs, then that's what you'll see. Unless you're talking about when they light up, you only see colored, but that's how it should be. Maybe he wants to clarify that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's you want to make sure you buy the clear LEDs yeah. so you can't see what color it is. Yeah. Go ahead, Jesse. Sorry. Um, so uh, did you check your messages? I sent you a message. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, and then there's another question here too. Um, oh yeah, we can product do. links. So uh, I think the the general idea of how this is going to go. I know this is our first build, but you're going to have ahead of time. We kind of mentioned it last time, but you're going to put as much as you can the Amazon link and everything in there to or the number. So it makes it really easy for people to get the exact parts on Amazon, right? Yes, you that's that the you can get it plenty of time. Yes, that's that's the plan. And, uh, you know, if you don't see something on there, you have a question, uh, send me an email, the gadget cash talk at gmail.com okay. or gadget cash talk podcast. Okay. And before we go, I think Gary has an idea here. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, I, it was your idea. I think it's a good idea. There's the email, by the way, gadget talk podcast at gmail.com. Uh, we will, we'll, we will be updating the, uh, this month's products, uh, this month's, uh, parts list and all that so it'll be up to date and obviously we'll have um chad will will post uh april's uh build in a few weeks or next week i guess he'll have parts for uh for the one for the end of april um so we'll have parts for that um if there's any additional i guess what we'll probably do chad it'll be good is if we can always mention uh like say for example if we use leds again we could always mention if you happen to have built the March one, you probably have extras, you know, just so people figure that out. Anyway, they're kind of start building their own parts thing, but 
what I find from a lot of people is they love LEDs and it looks so cool and high tech. Mm -hmm. um, and so I use them in, in a lot of. Yeah. Fields. So those are good to have, but um, yeah, I liked uh, Jesse has, had a great idea. So Jesse, go ahead. So we can't do this every time, but we do have a couple of prizes stored up. So for the first three people that build one of these and publish it as a geocache, we'll send you a prize. Yeah. We'll put it up on the website. We'll put everybody's up on the website that gets one out. But for the first three people, we got a prize for you. We'll send it to you. I don't even know what the prize is yet, but that, okay. that, 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 anyway, is it? the point is to, to yep. get out there and publish these. Send us your GC numbers. We'll show them and we'll highlight those first three. We'll jump down the parts vault uh, or the uh, prize vault and we'll grab some cool stuff out of it. And uh, containers and all kinds of stuff. That's So yeah. we got some stuff to, to, to give away as prizes, but it's, it's really more about being first, right? That's it's not about the prize. Come on, <laughs> being first. So I'd I'd love to see who the first three people are that get a good container out there, cash page, send it in to us, and we'll we'll also highlight the cash on the show too. So, yeah, um, and give us, uh, you know, give give Chad a, a shameless plug for Gadget Talk. So yeah. definitely, uh, in fact, I think that's going to be a requirement, right? Just <laughs> they have to, in the cash page they have to put a little note for Gadget Talk. Of course, we're you know, come on now. <laughs> However you want to do it, and be creative, right? The, the yeah. most because this is going to be highlighted all over the place. So you know, don't just throw it out there. Do a really good one. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious and, and excited to see what people come up with. It's you know that's kind of the point of this is is to get people into things like this and and get them out, get more creative caches out there for people to find. Yeah. And if and if anybody has ideas of builds they want to do or questions, you know, make sure they send us. Um, at our at our email, the gadget ta gadget talk podcast at gmail.com. Send us your ideas, and um, you know if it's something we can do easy enough that isn't too hard. We'd love to to go ahead and build it. You know, talk about it. If you have an idea for something, but you don't know how to quite execute it, you know, send it in. Maybe we can can get something done. Um, good question. I think we do have the image. We could probably put out on the page can't we that's a derek has that i will have to i mean i have a copy of it I what image the gadget talk image gadget talk image oh, that's a good question we should be able to put it on the page so people can download it yeah i think that shouldn't be a problem we we'll have to talk to our, our our it department there you go exactly um but you had some you have some uh Cool photos of there's one out in the that you had out in the wild there, and that one is actually outside of Red Robin. <laughs> it's Red uh, Robin. So, uh, yeah, that was the name of that one. It was called Yum. Um, <laughs> Yum. So, there's the um, other one. That's there's cool. the other one. Yeah, with with orange and pink lights, which is is fun because it's kind of getting away from your traditional lights. Sure. Cool. On that. So that we're doing a you know a technical build tonight, and all four of us have our glasses on. So <laughs> that makes us harder, right? So that gives us a better chance of making this work out right. That's right. Yeah, it, it, it's a great build, a great way to start, and we can expand so much from that. No, Adi, you got to put a new one out for Mingo. Yeah, come on. Yeah, he's going to put more out from me. Uh, Adi has a really cool one. Uh, I'm a shameless plug for Mingo Madness. Definitely come out to Colby. Um, there's one uh, in Colby where – you got to do some fancy, fancy work to figure out the the lights because he's got the Arduino in there, and uh, we had to we had a group and we were trying to <laughs> figure it out. It was cold, and we were we, we finally got it worked out, so it was fine. We had a great time doing that one. Yeah, and I think we're all going to be at Mingo, right? So yeah. if you have a building and put it out, bring it to Mingo if you're coming and show it to us. Yeah, we'll yeah. look at it. Something we're going to mention um, a little bit. Uh, so I was mentioning tonight we're on gadget talk. So, um, we are going to have a gadget slash creative cash contest at Mingo madness. So everybody bring your gadget caches to, to Mingo, uh, for the mega. And we're going to have a, an area we've already got sort of staked out an area where we're going to put all these gadget caches so people can go do massive amounts of gadget caches and you get to vote for the one that you, you think's the best and we'll have prizes for the winners and we'll have 
a lot of fun. So um, that's what Ryan's telling me is to announce the contest. I just did. So there that's you go. great. I didn't know about that. I'm going to have to start working on something. That's yeah. A- See what I can do. So I guess I probably should have put my name on it though, because <laughs> then that wouldn't work. Yeah. So everybody make a build of uh, any kind of gadget cash, bring it out, and um, it'll be all set. So cool. Uh, yeah. I guess last thoughts, Jesse. Um, no, I, I'm really excited to see what everybody does with this. Uh, we built ours, so there's no excuse. <laughs> and we didn't have the right parts, and it still works. So um, we had a lot of fun with it, and we're going to build every month. We're going to build right alongside, and we're going to put them all out too. So, And I think she's going to take over and build each one of these. So, um, it, And she has no experience before this, so uh, <laughs> it should be good. You're not worried at all, are you? Well, no. <laughs> so, and uh, – I want to uh, put every one of these out. I'd love to see just um, all of a sudden people start talking about, why is there so many gadget caches out everywhere? So this would be great. <laughs> That'd be good. That's and awesome. uh, someone mentioned his 3D printer printed cache is allowed. Yeah, absolutely. 3D, yeah. Ca- 3D printed cache puzzles are awesome, or even just caches. So anything, any way you can be creative, bring them out. Yep. Or, or even share them to, with us. It doesn't even have to be the build we have. I mean, if you want to share them, I'll, I'll put them out on the Instagram and, and uh, you know, we'll get them out there so people can find them. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, let's do our outro and we'll let people go for the night. And that was great. The next one is um, March. Next show is March 25th. I think I have that right. That's the fourth Tuesday. Did I get it right? March 25th. March, yeah, exactly one month. March twenty fourth. Sorry, Tuesday the twenty fourth. Let me fix it. <laughs> Hang on, hold that thought. Hold that thought. See, that's why you check these things for you. <laughs> Next show is March twenty fourth. <laughs> so there we go. We'll have the parts list out and the build uh, next uh, first week of the month. Yeah, first week of March. Uh, we'll definitely have that out. That'd be great. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank- Hang on. We'll we'll give a we'll give a we'll do our little outro and we'll say goodbye to everybody real quick. All right. Let me do the. I like this. I like the video. Thanks again, Derek, for this. Chad, that was that was awesome. Great, it was fun. It's fun. It was a blast. Great Looking job. Forward to next month. Looking forward to next month. All right. See everybody. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Uh-